So one thing that, that I'd like to share is some details on how PCR is done, not because it's a bad test, it's because if you understand the limitations of the test, you can better interpret the results. So a simple question that I normally ask my students is like, you just got that 2cc of EDTA blood and you're sending it to the lab. How much of that sample that you're sending to the lab will actually be tested? So here, let's walk through what the lab does when the sample from your patient arrives there. Normally, we collect between 1 ml or 2 ml of a blood sample. And if you're talking about a 2-hour Great Dane, that might represent between 2% to 0.01% of the total blood volume of that animal. Now, in the lab, we normally use 100 to 200 microliters of the original blood sample, so 0.1 to 0.2 ml of the original sample to do the DNA extraction. So around one-tenth of the original 1 ml that you submitted. From those 100, we only use 1 to 5 microliters of the original sample for the PCR testing. And from that, then we run a gel, and these are examples of positive PCRs for vector-borne pathogens, and where we load up some of that DNA that was amplified for us to see under UV light. So how much actually we tested? We tested between one and five microliters, which is actually like one tenth of a drop of blood. So if this is a drop of blood from your sick patient, this is five microliters, but not on scale. So if we tested this five microliters of this blood drop that by accident had three organisms of your pathogen, but I'm not picking it because by chance, the five microliters I'm testing, it's not those five microliters of the DNA present, the PCR will be negative. If I tested here, the PCR will be negative. Only if I tested that sample that had the DNA, then I can detect it. So in diseases that have hyperazetemia, when I'm talking about thousands of organisms in the bloodstream 24-7, then molecular diagnostic tests can easily detected. But if you're dealing with low or transient parasitemia, then it's challenging. A great example is the Borrelia burgdorferi PCR. So no one can recommend a PCR for Lyme disease nowadays from blood samples because Lyme disease, the spirochetes stay in circulation for limited amounts of time and then just migrates to the tissue, really pokes outside of the capillaries and migrate through the tissue. That's why we see clinical signs in joints, in the kidneys, etc. The best PCR for Lyme is the tissue biopsy of the bullseye lesion, because then you have the spirochete migrating through the tissue. So when you're looking for Lyme disease, blood PCR for Lyme disease is not a good diagnostic tool, but skin biopsies are excellent. Other example is Bartonella, because Bartonella hides in the endothelial cells and it sheds into circulation, believed to happen every seven to 10 days. So you have those up and down of number of organisms in circulation. So some of the recent publications recommend three PCRs within a week to see if you can catch that high number of parasitemia that happen from time to time. Now, Specifically for Bartonella, we do have a way to make this better. The group at NC State developed a liquid culture medium to increase the number of organisms, which they call the BAPIGM growth medium. Basically what they do, they grow that sample with very low amounts of Bartonella into a liquid growth culture system where you increase the number of the organisms, then you do your PCR. So Doing this approach, you increase the number of your target, so then the PCR can get detected, and from there you can get an isolate on a plate. So specifically for Bartonella detection, this is the best system that we have at this point, or uh, where you can grow the organism, then detect by PCR. Other labs can also do solid growth and then do PCR from the isolates for detection, which also helps. But you have to have a growth step, which slows down the detection because Bartonella takes two weeks to a month for you to get an isolate in the lab. Now, 
my research group have worked on a third way to try to approach this problem that we call the sample size paradox, where we normally now, no matter how perfect is your PCR, we only test this minute amount of volume, one tenth of a drop. What if I concentrate the number of organisms into a smaller vial so I could test it? 